Good day, everyone. Hello. Hi, Adam. Good Hi, day. Diana. Good day. Hello. <laughs> All right. So, good day, everyone. Welcome to the fifth Antitrust It's Coffee Time webinar. I hope you are having a wonderful day. I am Audrian from Antitrust, and I'm going to be your host. We are comparing to the two most popular CBI programs nowadays. Our topic is differences, pros and cons, Turkish citizenship versus Sankit and Navi citizenship. Let me introduce you our citizenship by investment specialist, Ms. Diana Clexton Vitaker, legal advisor and trust, and Mr. Imad Albitar, Middle East managing partner and trust. Hello, Adrian. Hello. Hello, Diana. Citizenship by investment programs in the Caribbean are among the most popular, reliable, and affordable of all. Recent reductions in minimum investment due to the COVID-19 situation have proven especially attractive to global business people and their families. But while everyone is discussing changes in the Caribbean programs, Turkey has not been standing still. The Turkey Citizenship by Investment Program attracts more and more investors who purchase real estate and obtain second citizenship in record time. So let's dive into the details and start with the Senkits and Nevis CBI program. Ms. Claxton Whitaker, mm, sorry, just a little technical issue at me. Okay, so why Senkits and Nevis? Why Senkits and Nevis? Well, I would say there is a dual benefit with Senkits and Nevis citizenship by investment program. First, there's a benefit to the investor. They are invested in the CBI program that has a platinum standard of excellence. It's the oldest program. The process is easy and straightforward. There is no requirement for a visit or an interview. And there are some developments under the real estate option that have a high return on the investment, such as the Four Seasons or the Park Hyatt, which are brand names. Um, and there's also a benefit to the country, to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, in that we are able to use these funds to boost our economy. And, and this is in turn used for infrastructural development, for investment in education, et cetera. Then also through the citizenship by investment program, the knowledge of the Federation is spread worldwide. So it also boosts our tourism industry. And through the real estate sector, there is development in construction. So as I said, there's a dual benefit to both the investor and the federation. Sounds perfect. And what are the investment options? For the investment options, uh, either the donation option, which is a sustainable growth fund, or the real estate option. Under the real estate option, there are two price limits. You can either do the, the 200K, which um, you are able to sell, resell the property in seven years, or the 400K, which is a minimum, where you are able to resell within five years. The sustainable growth fund is just a lump sum payment that you make to the government in exchange for their passport. Okay. What are the rules regarding adding dependents? All right. So, as you know, dependents are your relatives. In St. Nevis, you can add uh, your children um, 18 years and under, and 18 and to 30 if they are in an educational institution or fully dependent on you. The main applicant can also add the parents or grandparents once they are over 55 years and uh, fully dependent on the main applicant. All right, so we can say that the program uh, quite support also the, the families. families and, the family yeah. family program. That's great. Um, are there currently any promotions? Yes, right now we have a limited time offer for the sustainable growth fund. Usually the investment amount was 150,000 for a single applicant and 195,000 for a family of four. But on the limited time offer, you can now get the price of a family of four 
for one person. So the price for family of four is currently 150,000 and that will go up until December 31st. For the real estate option, there has been a reduction in stamp duty to 2.5%, which means that the purchaser will have a less, the, the aggregate um, investment amount will be less for the purchaser. Okay, sounds, sounds great. So we can say that we, who, who has been thinking to apply nowadays or, or even ask the question that, uh, okay, there is this pandemic situation, should I move forward or should I wait? I think the answer is crystal clear that, yeah, this is the time to apply for a second citizenship. Yeah, okay. Uh, so when someone decided to apply for, for example, the Sankit uh, and Navi citizenship, what are the required documents? Well, I wouldn't go through the entire list, but there are some documents that are required for all applicants, okay. uh, such as the application forms, passport, passport photos, copies of ID, and there are other documents that are special to the main applicant only, such as the the um, reference letters, like the bank reference letter, professional reference letter, the proof of source of funds, and the power of attorney. So the, the list is it's too long to go through here, but not too long to be exhausted. But that's basically the most important document. Sure, thank you. So, okay, please explain then uh, the citizenship application process. So how does it look like exactly? Okay, so if you choose to use NTL as your service provider, then the first thing you do, you execute the contract with NTL and you pay half of the professional fees up front. You begin to uh, prepare, we'll send you the application forms and the list of required documents. You begin to prepare your application, you get your documents certified, everything you have to do is pretty straightforward. And you send the scans of your documents for us to review. Once we confirm that everything is accurate and the application is ready for submission, you then pay your application fees and you send the physical application to St. Peter Nevis for us to submit to the CIA. Once you submit that application, we then wait for the final decision from the CIA. Once we receive that, we will inform you accordingly. You then pay the investment amount and await the issuance of your certificate of registration. Upon receiving that certificate, we will send you a scan. Once you approve of it, you then apply for your passport. The passport process takes four business days, expedited or 10 business days, regular processing. Once you receive your passport, we send you a scan you approve, you pay the second half of your professional fees and we ship the documents to you and you are officially a citizen of St. Peter Nevis. Wow, so it, it sounds actually um, a fast process, can we say that? It's so it's very straightforward, very easy. That's a great news, I think, for everyone. Okay, and what are the most important, uh, no, sorry, I have another question before it. So, what, in your opinion, is the best feature of the St. Kitts and Nevis citizenship program? In my opinion, the best feature and the only jurisdiction that offers that feature in the Caribbean is the accelerated application process. So usually the, the typical processing time for an application is 90 days. It can go up until maybe six months, depending on if there are any queries or any issues with applications. With the accelerated application process, you are guaranteed that your application is processed within 60 days. The only thing that would affect that guarantee is if there are any unforeseen issues, any queries, or anything like that. Typically, we see we have seen applications approved in a little as six weeks, maybe even four weeks under the accelerated application process. So that is definitely the best feature in my opinion. Okay, thank you. And what are the most important benefits of becoming a citizen of St. Kitts and Navis? Well, the most important benefit is you get to meet friendly people like myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> That's an important one. Okay. <laughs> there's also visa free access to over 140 countries. We have low tax, there's no income tax, no inheritance tax, no gift tax. Um, the citizenship is passed on through your descendants. 
So if you have a child that is born after you receive the approval, you don't even have to apply for citizenship to the, the CIU, for, for the Citizenship by Investment mm -hmm. Unit. You can actually apply for citizenship by descent, which is a much cheaper process to save thousands. And this is, this is guaranteed. Once you are a citizen of St. Peter Nevis and you get a child after, your child is guaranteed citizenship. So, and also the country is very safe and it is free from political unrest and instability. Well, you're welcome. You're welcoming everybody. <laughs> so we can say that there are a lot of benefits actually become a citizen of uh, this beautiful country. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Um, well, I think uh, we know more about this option now and uh, just for your uh, attention, you can also see this table on the screen, dear attendant. So uh, you can actually um, take a, a screenshot or just uh, write these main information, main facts down of both uh, jurisdictions and countries. And yeah, let's move forward to Turkey a bit and, uh, and, and let's see the details of it. So Mr. Abitar, what about Turkey? Why Turkey? Uh, Turkey, because of the location first, uh, Turkey located in the center of Europe and Asia. Uh, it is near the Middle East and Africa, and you can reach, when you are in Turkey, around 60 capital city within flight of six hours. The country is the most visited country in this region. We have, uh, in 2019, around 90 million, uh, 50 million visitors, with a revenue of uh, above $30 billion. It is a business and hub center, and it's the largest country and the strongest economy in the region. So investors can really enjoy the life with their family in the safe environment and enjoy of the Turkish cuisine. All right, thank you. So we can, we can say that, yeah, we are really talking about two totally different the country is totally different areas, but um, each of them has got its own benefits. Okay, so what are the investment options uh, to apply for Turkey citizenship? And what are the ways to apply for Turkey citizenship by investment? Um, I just want to add something, uh, Adrian. Uh, we, are, we like the Caribbean and we work all the time with the Caribbean. Turkey is just another option for the investor and it's really for different uh, investors. So that doesn't mean when I present Turkey, I don't like Caribbean in opposite. I like Caribbean much. Now we can come back to the point, uh, what the option. We have in Turkey mostly all the available option worldwide. We have six options to apply for citizenship by investment. The main option or the important option, it was the real estate investment. And it is interesting after deduction, uh, deduction from the government, the investment amount from 1 million to 250,000. The main thing in Turkey, you can buy any real estate. And you are not limited to buy one, you can buy multiple real estate with the 250,000 US dollar. And this is not limited out for commercial or residential. It can be also a block. Mm -hmm. So this is a free, and the investment amount should be really 250,000. So there will be an evaluation company uh, approved by government who control this. And that gives of the investor a security. What he buy, it worth the amount what he spent in the, for the citizenship by investment. Uh, the second option and the main option is uh, to put 500,000 fixed deposit in the bank for three years. And this money can be put it in uh, dollar, euro, Turkish lira, or in gold. And they are of return of investment or interest rate for this amount. The other four option, usually also 500,000 investment in real estate bond or government bond or employing uh, 50 Turkish worker. But the first and the second option is the main use option by investor. All right, thank you. So we can see that there are really a lot of options. Uh, this is correct. How to invest in, uh, in Turkey. And, uh, and if you see the real estate option, it's kind of flexible, right? That is correct, yeah, really. Okay, so who can be added to the citizenship application? There are limitations, unfortunately, in the CBI in Turkey. That's only uh, main applicant and spouse can be wife or 
husband. That means any of them can be the main applicant and children. Children are limited only to the age of 18. Usually, if we have above 18, any children, child, it will get a residency permit, but it will not get the citizenship. And after five years, he can apply for citizenship. But I don't know if that's interesting for our audience. We have cases where the second wife was approved. Although the second wife, uh, second marriage in Turkey is not allowed, but they are tolerant to accept our the second wife, not to separate the family. Okay, so we can we can see here some flexibility too, but Correct. I can say that the, if when we are talking about uh, uh, the, the possibility of, of dependent uh, uh, cool. in the CBI, we might can say that in St. Kitts and Navies there is a, a bit uh, more flexibility in general, right? That is, that is correct, yeah. Okay. They are more flexible in this regard. Yeah. What is special on the Turkish CBI? Uh, there are a lot or many really point what can be mentioned uh, in Turkey uh, as a special program. But the important thing what I want to mention is the A2 visa. Mm -hmm. If you are citizen of Turkey or CBI citizen, you can apply for a visa for US, and this is a residency visa, what the approval usually take only six weeks. That means the citizenship or the citizen from Turkey have the option to make this visa or, uh, or to apply for this visa. And we have the second one is the Ankara agreement. This Ankara agreement between European Union and UK and Turkey. That means if any investor wants to establish himself in UK, and they have a good visibility study, they will get also residency in the uh, UK. What gives the option to expand the business worldwide? Uh, in Turkey, we don't have a declaration for any asset worldwide, except if the investors are tax residents in Turkey. Okay, and, but yeah, yeah but being a citizen and being a tax resident, it's just kind of the two different things here, right? That is correct. Okay. If you have to, if you are a tax resident in Turkey, then definitely you have to apply for all the regulation. In Turkey, definitely we have, as we mentioned, we have a lot of options to apply for citizenship. It's a fast track uh, citizenship by investment. Uh, the approval time is three months, and we get the last approval in three months and 12 days. And this was in the Corona time. So okay. the government was fully functional. And although everything, it was almost online. Uh, we have in Turkey, uh, in compared to the Caribbean in general, less fee. That means uh, if we apply for a family with 11 children, we pay the same, 250,000, that's all, and small amount administration cost. They don't ask, the government don't have any much benefit from the citizenship by investment itself. They do it just for the economy. The developer have the benefit and the bank, where, we, the, bank, uh, where the money will be deposited in the bank. And usually in the Caribbean, we have a little higher cost. Uh, definitely, if you are part uh, of uh, this country and citizen of this country, you will enjoy the excellent health and education system for the family, and definitely a safe environment with high quality of life, and definitely of the most uh, delicious food in the world, what I enjoy it too. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. When we are coming back uh, to the application itself, what are the basic documents in, in Turkey required for the application? You will, you will be surprised, Adrian. We need just the birth certificate, marriage certificate, or family book. We need the passport. That's all. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, and then definitely we do a residency. We, can, uh, we do the residency for the investor. But that's, that's all what we need from the client. Birth certificate, marriage certificate, uh, and then the passport and uh, all the documents should be uh, uh, translated to Turkish language and attested. Thank you. Uh, and how to apply for Turkish citizenship and what is the procedure when we have all these documents translated? What is happening then? We need the first, we need to choose what kind of investment, the way of the investment. Uh, then we will, for example, in, in real estate investment, uh, the property should be evaluated, as we mentioned, that uh, the 250,000 should be fulfilled. Otherwise, it will be not accepted. 
So most of the people buy property for 260 or 270 because always in the evaluation, there are some tolerance. Uh, after that, uh, the owner or the investor will commit himself that he will not sell this property for three years. That means this commitment will be registered in the land department. Then we apply to approve this property is uh, fulfill the requirement for citizenship by investment. So we get confirmation from the government or from the authority uh, called certificate of comfort, uh, conformity. After that, we have to apply for residency, uh, investment residency permit for the main applicant only. When we do this step, we can apply and submit the document to the government. And after, as I mentioned, in around three, uh, three months, the approval will come usually to, uh, because when the, uh, usually before we start, when we apply for the approval that the property is worth and this is, can be accepted, there are due diligence happening from the government itself. So mostly we have approval, we don't have any denial. That sounds great. And uh, what about the people who are thinking of doing business in Turkey? They are in the right position and right location. You know, Turkey is the only CBI country uh, with more than $2 trillion economy. And this is a major hub and trade uh, between Asia and Europe. And this is the number 17 in the world uh, listed as economic country. And uh, in Turkey, you have main power, you have a huge land, and you have government support for new business. That I means it's really easy to open and establish a business, open a bank account, and the government in a lot of section where they see that the country needs uh, this kind of product, they make subsidiary and uh, they support the investor and make a refund for his investment from 40 to 50,000, uh, 40 to 50 percent of the capital invested. Okay, it sounds great. So it, we can say that it's really worth doing business in Turkey and we might can also say that that people ha who are uh, interested in uh, the, the Turkish CBI they might also want to relocate so it's in the that is correct that is the main difference between Caribbean and the Turkey okay thank you uh, and uh, we also got a question that is usually uh, a very common question nowadays uh, in the people's mind, what about military service? And well, how to avoid it in Turkey as a fresh citizen or as a fresh citizen with a family with, with children? Uh, in Turkish citizenship, they consider the people who uh, enter this program as a Turkish uh, people. Yeah. So the military service is available for the children, uh, but it can be some exception for them. Till now, we don't know how the exception will be happening because till now we don't have the case that uh, people have to go to the military. But by the law, still this point is not clear. That means military service usually, I can say, should be uh, applicable for the new uh, children because all the children are below the 18 when they enter uh, this program. Exactly. Okay, so we can say that something is going to happen around that it. is correct and expect that when the time comes when the first cases are, are coming um, everyone will know more about what, what I can say what I can say one, my, one of our partner in Turkey he is since two or three years uh, citizen till now nobody asked his children to go to the military but the law said it should be but nobody do it practically we don't know how it will be received uh, uh, later okay Thank you so much. And I have got a few questions to both of you. Uh, uh, and the first one is, uh, how is the pandemic situation in, in these countries? And now I'm also I, I asking um, for Sankit and Navis and, and for Turkey. How could you manage it? What's going on right now? Um, and, and what can we expect for this, for this year? If you if you see anything in the near future, who will answer first? Lady first. <laughs> Lady first. <laughs> okay. Correct. 
Okay, well, um, for St. Kitts and Nevis, the pandemic was managed pretty well. Our borders were closed when things had really heightened. So we only had, in the beginning, 15 confirmed cases. Um, these were um, recovered, and then we were corona-free for about two months, and then citizens started coming in through pri private charters, and then we had two more confirmed mm -hmm. cases. One has already recovered, so at the moment we only have one confirmed case that is recovered. And that is in St. Kitts. In Nevis, we have been corona-free for about maybe two or three months. And uh, nice. the, the plan is to put things, safety measures in place and then look to reopen the borders by October. But I have seen on the news that the plan, they seem to have only allowed UK and Canada citizens to fly in when the borders will open. I think they're gonna um, delay the opening to Americans for a bit because of the situation. Thank you. So we can we can say that that St. Kitts and Nevis is a safe haven right now in the world yes. uh, in in terms of the pandemic situation. What about Turkey? Turkey usually have a different situation when we talk about 80 million people mm -hmm. and exactly. 50 million people uh, visiting the country. It should be usually worse. But I can say now the real people who is affected is around 25,000. Because we should look at uh, the people who is affected and the people who is, who is cured. So yeah. 25,000 is still manageable. And usually we are the affected people 1,000 and the cured people 1,100, something, sometimes plus or minus. I think this is still manageable. People go at the street with the mask till now. Mm -hmm. And we should wait uh, later on how the situation will be happening when the school is open. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. And what can we say that what has changed in, in this year in, in 2020 and what unique opportunities do these countries provide? Maybe also because of this situation, because it affected it has affected really everything, uh, and uh, and these countries just reacted uh, on on this situation. So, what are the news? In Turkey, nothing happened noily, uh, except the um, lowering the investment amount from one million to two hundred fifty, and still now I think it's one of the good price or good cost uh, for investor to get the new citizenship. So I don't, we don't expect oh, in Corona time any reduction. In opposite, we was expecting at the end of the year, when, from the beginning, that the price will be increased for the investment. Okay. Now, by Corona time, we think it will be now continue as it is. Okay, but it's still good news, right? So if it's not increasing, it's just the same it's, amount. It's just that's still what we're expecting, correct. Yes. Okay. And and uh, yeah, um, uh, we know about the, the limited time offer. But if you can just repeat the, the main facts, uh, the main facts, uh, then um, then it would be also nice. Yes. So as I said, um, the limited time offer was introduced to bring a boost to the economy, and um, usually the price was one hundred ninety-five thousand for a family of four. 150,000 for a single applicant. So now the price is currently 150,000 for a family of four and 10,000 for each additional dependent after that. But the, due to the, the crisis, the government is also looking for people to invest in other areas. So it's not only that they want to attract people with citizenship by investment, but they want people to invest in the tourism sector as well, construction sector. They want people to come in as developers. So it's, it's not just limited to citizenship by investment because the government is open to any kind of investors right now because they really need to boost the economy. Okay, thank you. So uh, if we are talking about the conclusion, what is the main difference between the Turkish CBI and, and the Caribbean CBI? Maybe we can talk a little bit here about the region itself, but mm -hmm. of course we are focusing right now uh, for, for St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, and its citizenship by investment program. But so if you want to have a conclusion and, and I'm, I'm just trying to get there that um, um, for whom, which program is maybe more ideal 
uh, at the at the moment. If I please, please, Diana, you are, you are, you are first, <laughs> lady first. I think, it, I think it depends on what the investor wants. If they want to be able to travel to many more countries, um, uh, if they want to be able to add more family members without having to wait for the five years, as I might say, or uh, uh, not having to do a separate application, then, you know, it, it all depends on what they want. Okay. Imad? Um, if I compare it first with the visa-free traveling, mm -hmm. Turkey can, with the passport of Turkey or citizen, you can buy, uh, travel to 110 uh, countries visa-free. Europe, uh, Caribbean in general, have access to Europe and the UK, and they have more visa-free travel. Uh, uh, freedom. Uh, in regard of the doing business outside, Turkey have the A2 visa and UK visa option. What in the Caribbean, if I compare it, we have only Granada who have this option, A2 visa. Uh, the investment option, Turkey have really a lot of way to invest and they don't have any donation. As I mentioned before, that the government don't have any benefit. So I don't expect the government to reduce anything right now. Uh, but in the Caribbean, we have the real estate option and donation option. Uh, when we talk about uh, what else we have, uh, for example, the fee for the children in the Caribbean is a little high. When we talk about family up four people, uh, in the in Turkish citizenship by investment, we have almost uh, no investment or no cost. Uh, there are no refund of fee. What usually I can say, Turkey citizenship is the last or the less worldwide where the investor don't spend money where he cannot get it back, because his real estate will come back usually, and there are evaluation for that. Uh, in general, I can say Turkey citizenship is suitable for people who have a problem in their own country and they want to have a second home, or another option for them. Uh, and then definitely they have the option to expand their business. Turk, uh, Caribbean citizenship or Sanket citizenship is really to enjoy free traveling, to enjoy of visiting the country, the nice beach in the Caribbean, and then uh, where they are located and expand their business, but they don't need to move around. In Turkey, we have really people who are coming from country where they have trouble. And I think Turkish uh, citizenship will be for this kind of investor more suitable. Okay, thank you so much. Well, I think um, you have just uh, answered for all of our questions. Uh, we have already had until now. So um, dear attendants, if there is any further questions, uh, please use your opportunity to ask live uh, Miss uh, Claxton Vitaker and, and Mr. Elbitar uh, of these um, wonderful uh, citizenship by investment options or, or for example, just the investment options if, if you would like to know more about it because they are here now to answer for your questions. But as I see, maybe that's all we had. I uh, don't see any further questions here. If it is like that, then uh, I would like to thank you uh, for sure. being here. Thank you for your time, uh, dear speakers, uh, and for all the details you just shared with us uh, about these jurisdictions. I am very sure that maybe our attendees uh, will have uh, some further questions. Uh, so then they can uh, contact, you can contact us anytime uh, on our main um, uh, on our website, for example, www.ntltrust.com, or you can write us an email to the info at ntltrust.com. And we are also on social media platforms like on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, thank you for your time today being here with us uh, on the fifth It's Coffee Time webinar. We will let you know when we will have our next interesting topic uh, and our next webinar and uh, have a wonderful afternoon or morning depending on where you are in the world and uh, thank you again.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Diana. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.